Hello coders and welcome to another C Sharp Fundamentals tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about collections of data. Now collections are used to store and organize your data. We're going to talk about lists and arrays in this tutorial. So listen, lists and arrays in C Sharp are generic, meaning that they can hold any data type, even our own custom class types. So if you've been following along in this series, we could even put our enemy class into a list and have several enemies um, stored within a list or an array as a collection of organized data. Lists are dynamic and arrays are not. Okay, so what I mean by the fact that lists are dynamic is that the size of our list can be, um, it can be modified at runtime. So if we initialize a, a list, that list can be however, it can be the size of however many elements that we have stored within it. Um, now I think that the way the list is set up, the, the way the list data, data structure is set up is the list is always going to have more spaces uh, of memory in it than the amount of items that are in the list. So the pitfall with lists is that you're always going to have more memory allocated than you need. Whereas arrays being not dynamic, uh, you have to define the space of memory that you want to use and the amount of memory that you're using is always going to be used to the fullest. So using arrays, um, I guess use, use an array whenever you know exactly how many spaces you want to use. Use a list whenever you don't. So your list is going to be dynamic and your arrays are not. Okay, so first let's talk about how to initialize. To initialize a list, we're going to use uh, the list and um, so we're going to type out list. We're going to use these arrow brackets and inside the arrow brackets are going to be our data type that we want to be putting into this list. So this list is going to be holding integers, then we use our variable name, and then we set it equal to a new list int followed by parentheses. Now when it comes to arrays, we specify first the data type that we want our array to hold. So this is going to be an int, and then we use, um, we use brackets to signify that this data type is actually of type um, integer array. Okay, and then we signify that are we uh, we write the name of our array here set it equal to a new int and inside the brackets in the new int we specify how many elements we want to store within this array okay so let's start off by how do we add things to an array in a list well we could use a for loop so here I use a for loop that goes from 0 and goes all the way up until I, I is less than 10 so I starts at 0 goes up until I is less than 10 um, and then what I do is I'm able to access what is called the indices. Okay, so here I am I am accessing each index of the list and array. Okay, and this is the index right here. This is the index operator where it's the uh, brackets that comes right after the name uh, for an array. And then we just set that equal to i. And then to add items into a list, we say the name of the list dot add. And then we, since add is a method, we're going to use parentheses. Inside the parentheses is where our value is going to go. Okay, we're going to talk about how to remove from a list. We're going to come back to that though. Um, how about if we want to find a certain item within our array or list? Okay, so here we have what is called a for each loop. And finally, we get to talk about for each loops because I didn't cover them in the loop loops tutorial. Okay, um, so what I did was I specified a target which is equal to four, and basically I want to run through each item in these arrays and the lists to see if um, any of my values are equal to the target. Okay, so I can use a for each loop, and the way for each loop works um, is we specify the data type that we're that we're iterating across, then we specify an iterator, so the iterator uh, variable is num and then we use C sharps keyword in which is going to signify that uh, it's going to signify a collection that we're looking into and then the last parameter is going to be um, our collection itself so for each loops only work on collections and so our collection here is the ints array and our collection here is the ints list these are two different for each loops okay and now inside the for each loops I'm going to be doing the exact same thing I'm just gonna say if num is equal to target and so again num is our iterator which is going to be equal um, to whatever value the for each loop is currently looking at within our collection okay so if num is equal to target uh, then we're gonna write line to say that the target is within the array or that the target is within the list okay 
now traversing all the elements in an array or list okay um, what we're going to use here is for loops so that we can know which index we're looking at so as you can see the way I type this out um, the way it's going to print out in the console is it's going to say basically the the collection at this index is equal to this value and to get the value we can just access the index like this um, it's the same thing with an array as it is with a list when we're accessing elements okay so let's run this to see what our output looks like okay so in our output um, here you can see is the output where we're looking for the target and the target is equal to four and we can see that four is in the int array and four, four is in the int list and then here we are printing out or traversing over the array and the list and printing out every value within it okay so uh, if you're wondering how these values got in there let's look back at our adding um, our methodology for adding elements to our array in our list so what we use again is a for loop it starts at i equals 0 and goes until it's less than 10, until i is less than 10. And what we're actually putting in to the values of our list and array is the value i. So whenever we're setting uh, for an array, whenever we're setting the index equal to something, we can just set it equal to anything we want, as long as it's of the data type of the array. With lists, we just use uh, the list.add method, and inside the parentheses, we put the value. Okay, so this is going to be i is equal to 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, all the way up to 9 since that value is less than 10. Okay, so that's how we get those values. Okay, and uh, again, you, you guys saw how it was printing out. I was able to, the reason I used a for loop was so I could access the index value that I was looking at. This is the main difference between a for loop and a for each loop, where in a for each loop, you do not have access to the index that you're looking at. Your num iterator takes care of all that for you. Um, so if you want to know which index you're looking at, then use a for loop. Essentially though, these two loops are doing the same thing in that they're iterating across the collection. Okay, so how about removing an item from an array or a list? Well, I'm going to go ahead and say you don't want to remove an item from an array. It's extremely inefficient. There is a way uh, by using a splice method. However, Again, like I said, arrays cannot be resized, so what actually happens with the splice method is you tell it which, which items in your array you want to remove, and it, uh, it looks at all the other items and creates an entirely new array, so it's, it's really inefficient. Uh, if you want to have something that is more dynamic, I recommend using a list. Okay, um, So to remove from a list, we can use the name of our list and say dot remove at, and inside the remove at parentheses, we specify the index, okay? So this isn't the value. This isn't saying that we're going to look inside the list until we find four and remove four. This is saying we're going to look inside the list until we get to the fourth index, and then we're going to remove whatever value is inside that index, okay? So again, this isn't looking for the value four. This is actually looking... Uh, for the fourth index and you can see that if we back out a little bit we type remove it and then we open up with our parentheses it's going to tell you what it what it's expecting an index right here okay so not a value so we're going to remove at the fourth index and this is naturally going to remove um, the number four from our list just by nature because we're starting off at i equals zero if i start off at i equals one then it's going to remove um, it's going to remove uh, number five from our list. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we're getting printed out. Okay, so here we have our, our, our array and you can see that uh, we're going from zero, one, two, three, all the way to nine. Here in our list, actually, we remove five, like I said, uh, because this is the fourth index. If you count, you always start counting from zero, okay? Um, so always start from zero. Zero here, this is the zeroth, the zeroth element. Uh, this is the first element. So one, sorry, you guys can't see my mouse. So if we're looking at the my ints list section of this output, where the one is, that is the zeroth position in the list. 
two is the first position in the list, three is the second position in the list, four is the third, and five, which got removed, was the fourth uh, position in the list. So to make this a little bit easier to understand, I'm gonna go back here and start adding elements from zero. And then I'm gonna go ahead and debug and run again. So again, we're, we're removing from the fourth index here. So if we go back and look at this, um, you can see that from our Mayans list, we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, and we are removing at that fourth index, the, the number four, okay? So that's how the remove method works. Okay, well, let's say we wanna clear out our collection. So we can do this with array. Array, we actually access the array class and then say dot clear. The first parameter is going to be our actual array. The second parameter is going to be the index we want to start removing or we want to start clearing from. And then, um, and then the second parameter is the index that we want to stop removing from. Okay, so this is going to remove or this is going to, cl this is going to clear um, every element inside the array because we're going from the first position in the array to the last position in the array. And so my, my int array dot length is going to access that last index, or it's going to access however many elements are within the, within the array. Okay, uh, the last index is actually dot length minus one because our indices start at zero. Okay, so this, uh, this actually isn't going to remove anything from our array, it's going to zero out all of the values. Okay, so if we run this, all of our array values should be equal to zero. And there you can see how it works. So it doesn't actually remove elements, it just uh, zeroes them out. And so you can see the difference here. If I, if I remove all the elements from a, from a list, and again, we can do this because our lists are uh, dynamic. So at, they're dynamic in that we can add and remove at runtime. Um, elements in the array. So again, to remove from a list, to remove all of the elements in a list, we're going to use the remove range method. And we're and the and the first parameter is going to be the index we want to start at. The second parameter is going to be the and um, the the index that we're going to uh, stop removing from. Okay. Um, so that covers that. If I run this, you won't see any output from our list. Okay, so all we see is the array, and that's because we totally just removed all the elements from that list, okay? So that covers traversing elements in an array or a list, uh, finding elements in these collections, removing all elements from the collection, removing a singular item from a list. If you wanna remove a singular item from an array, don't do it, just put all of your um, data into a list instead. And then adding um, adding elements to our collections as well. So, if you guys have any other questions about um, co these collections, feel free to comment in the comment section below. But this is going to conclude our tutorial on lists and arrays. Um, I hope you guys liked the tutorial. If you did, go ahead and drop a like uh, so that we know that you want to see more of these types of tutorials. But as always, this has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial. Thanks for watching. Thank you.